Hello everyone and welcome to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. We're continu continuing on with our discussion of the demographic transition model. In our previous video we had uh, discussed just some of the basic characteristics of the demographic transition model, kind of looked at the overall view of the model and, and what it looked like overall, and now we're going through each of the four stages in the fifth hy hypothetical stage of the demographic transition model. So we're moving on into stage three of the demographic transition model, looking at its characteristics again. Stage three is characterized by moderate uh, population growth. Now what begins to happen is that you have a steady decline in the crude birth rate. As we saw in the previous video, when we looked at uh, how the crude birth rate and death rate were kind of coming back together, what begins to happen is, is birth rates begin to react to death rates. As I said, uh, you have uh, mostly children are surviving uh, because of increased food and medical technologies, just kind of depending on what's going on in, in, in any point in history. Uh, but we're able to support more people. So as a result, over the genera over the next couple of generations, uh, women start seeing that they don't uh, need to have as many children because children are not dying, and so they begin to have fewer and fewer children, even if they maybe are living in some more rural areas. But probably one of the more important elements of stage three in this decline in birth rate is going to be more along the lines of lifestyle change, because what we begin to see happen is as countries move through these different stages, we're also seeing development take place, and that's economic development, it's also social development. Social ideas begin to change, uh, especially as the economies begin to develop, because as countries become wealthier, their views on society a lot of times begin to change in terms of the roles of whether uh, men and women and what is and is not acceptable. So a lot of it is going to be uh, based on lifestyle changes. Uh, we begin to see during this movement, you, you see it in stage two, because people uh, begin, because of industrialization, people from the rural areas begin to move to the urban areas looking for jobs, looking for jobs that are going to pay a wage so that they can uh, improve their position, whether they're kicked off their land because it's purchased, or maybe now they're being taxed on their land and they have to pay money, they can't afford their land. I, don't, I mean, there's a lot of different situations. Um, but people begin to move to cities. They're looking for jobs, typically. They're looking for job opportunities. So you think about the difference between a rural area, even if somebody was living in a, in a, poor, you know, a poor rural town, maybe a little a shack or a shanty or you know, a, just a farmhouse that wasn't very well put together, now you're moving in, living in a city in a much more cramped and crowded condition. Typically, uh, it's going to be much more expensive to live in the city, even if you're, you're probably even living in, in, in less space. Now you're sharing less space with uh, just as many people. Life is more expensive. So over time, people are going to start saying, look, if we want to survive and if we want to improve our financial situation, we just need to stop having as many children. But again, you start to see uh, social changes. So things like birth control become uh, more acceptable because of the increased economic uh, situation. So again, there's this desire to have smaller families. And typically, kind of like the first generation, there's this real emphasis on education. So parents want to send their kids to school. So they're going to have fewer children, try to give their kids better opportunities. Uh, to go to school, maybe even the some of the children have to go to work. Again, this is, this conscious decision starts to get made to have fewer children, typically because of the conditions that the people are living in in the cities. And a lot of times, especially as we move towards state, the end of stage three of the demographic transition model, society has come to a point where women have a lot more, when I say options, it's, it's typically a lot more say-so in terms of uh, reproduction. So, uh, you know, it's no longer the, the, the man, or you know, if if it's a if it's a culture in which the mother-in-law is very involved, the mother-in-law demanding that the wife have children. Uh, but instead, now it's more the situation where the woman, I guess, you know, quote unquote, is empowered. The man and the woman make these decisions together. Uh, they decide what's best for their family. In a lot of situations, they begin to decide that fewer children is is better for their family. Not only that. Women wait till later in their lives to have children. Women want to go off and have careers. They want to get an education. They want to advance. Uh, families start deciding that you know if they want to live a comfortable middle class lifestyle, they're going to have to have fewer children. They want to provide things for their children. They want to provide education. They want to provide nice vacations. Maybe buy the kid a car when they turn 16. They want them to play uh, athletics, so rec ball. So all these things are, are additional expenses and. So the, uh, the families just decide that in order to provide for their families and provide these nice things for their kids, they need to end up having fewer kids. But again, you also have the situation where 
where women have more of these options. And again, I'll, I'll go back and reiterate the point that typically in these types of societies, things like contraception, forms of birth control, are, are no longer social taboos uh, that people uh, think of as, as some is wrong, whether it's ethically or religiously or whatever else uh, it happens to be. Okay. So if we begin to look at this again, even in the beginning of stage three, you still have relatively high birth rates and death rates, but here's when the reaction, look at this very steep and sharp decline of the birth rates as they begin to meet the death rates. Again, it's a, it's a reaction. The death rates, you don't see a tremendous decline in the death rates because we're hitting a point where really uh, death rates, we're, we're starting to push them as low as they can go. Uh, people will always die. If somebody's born, they will always die. And so you can't really stop that. So all you can do is improve the medicine enough to where people are able to live longer and longer and the death rates decline. When we move into stage three, as I said, stage two is when children are surviving. Stage three is more when the elderly are surviving. So we're able to figure out ways to keep people alive longer. Uh, Life-saving life um, procedures, uh, uh, things that can, can help with uh, the heart, you know, heart, uh, help with heart disease, heart surgeries, things like that, cures for cancer, other forms of diseases that, you know, would have uh, would have in earlier years uh, definitely killed off somebody were able to uh, were able to mitigate some of those and so again but it's still not a very sharp decline uh, but you see the most the most decline in birth rate and again it is in this stage when you start to see the migration of people from the countryside to the cities so you have this very sharp increase in population that population increase is still pretty steep until the age of end of stage three when you start to see these two begin to move back together Again, uh, population growth is characterized by this gap. Because you have this gap here, this is where your population growth exists. So as my gap gets smaller, my population growth is going to get smaller as well. So they begin to meet. Now, again, this is developing countries, industrialized countries, newly in maybe newly industrialized countries here. Sorry, newly industrialized countries maybe in stage two. They're industrializing, they're improving. Uh, the United States is actually still considered in stage three, kind of towards the end. We're still growing moderately, and that mainly has to do with uh, our migrant population. It really doesn't have anything to, do with, anything to do with the native population. In fact, I believe if you look at the native population in the United States, uh, people who've been in the United States for several generations, um, we actually have a declining population. So it is our migrant population uh, that is causing us to continue to grow. So if we look at stage four, again, stage four is characterized by very low growth. Uh, that is basically because what happens is, is crude birth rate and crude death rates come back to meet uh, at the other end of the demographic transition model, and they meet at very low levels, which means we have very low levels of births and very low levels of deaths. We have pushed death rates about as far down as they can go, and people are still dying. Birth rates in stage four are slightly above crude death rates, so maybe the 2.1 total fertility rate that we discussed, but they're hovering kind of right there together. So even if you have some growth, it's very it's very minimal. Again, a very low rate of natural increase. These are the absolute most modern, most developed of the countries. Uh, again, Western Europe, uh, Japan uh, is where we're seeing some of these very low stages of growth. And again, it's characterized by countries that have the most modern technologies, have the most advanced societies, have the most advanced uh, economies. All those things I was referring to earlier about what's happening in stage three really have come to full bloom in stage four. And I would probably argue that really has uh, most to do with the position of, in the view of the woman in the society. The woman is making uh, these decisions in terms of she doesn't want to get married. We're seeing a lot of that, especially in Japan. Um, she wants to advance her career, and so people are waiting uh, until much later to have children. Again, life is very expensive in general, uh, and so people don't necessarily want to have lots of kids and, and then that, that hinder their uh, economic development. So I would, say, I, would, I would say that a lot of this hinges around really the position of the woman in society uh, and really her ability to make more and more decisions on uh, whether or not she will or will not have children or how many children she will have. And again, we, we see this as a low to zero population growth uh, situation. So again, here's our stage four of the demographic transition model. We see the total population is starting to kind of uh, even out. We see the intermingling of crude birth rates and crude death rates down here at the bottom. And again, we've discussed a lot of this. Now, interestingly, 
When you get to this stage four, you start to move into a little bit of counter-urbanization. Uh, in this situation, people actually start moving outside of the cities because as those families begin to mature, they want to get out of the rough areas uh, and the dense areas of the city. They want to move to the suburbs, uh, give their kids some space, place to ride a bike, a uh, place where uh, the, the streets are safer, uh, those types of things. And so then we have the hypothetical stage five. Stage five is really only taking place, again, in those countries where we see the most level development. Again, hypothetical. We believe countries, if they continue in the, the trend that they have been going for the last little while, that this is where they will go. But just like economics, we really can't say that they're there until after they've been there. So it's characterized by negative population growth because what happens is crude birth rate declines below crude death rate. All right? And so people are having fewer children than people are dying. Again, we can't, people will die. There's nothing we, and there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. So the death rate has been pushed as far down as it can go. It's still very low. But what's happening, and again, is you just have that, con it's a conscious decision by people to have fewer and fewer children. And so it's gotten to that point where some of you people are having, are, are having so few children that there's not enough to reach that total uh, the total fertility rate of 2.1. And this is where we get uh, the problem of graying populations, where you have more elderly in the population than you have young, you have the situation of problems of providing uh, social services, things along those lines. Just like too, uh, too rapid a growth with the economy in terms of population is not good, neither is population decline. It is impossible to maintain your economy if your population is in decline. The government won't be able to sustain it the, the companies that are there won't be able to sustain it because you can't replace, you can't always replace uh, the workers and things along those lines. You can't provide the social services. So this is really, this is really not something that countries want to see. They don't want to see this population decline, especially some of the highly nationalistic countries in Europe. You are concerned that as their native population declines, it'll be uh, overtaken by migrant populations, and they're very concerned that their cultural heritage will be lo will be lost as uh, as. That's all that we have for the demographic transition model. Uh, next time we will look at the epidemiological transition model, uh, the deaths in a population and how it relates to the demographic transition model and development.